Good morning. This is the last week that we are answering questions about heaven. Today's question is, what will our homes be like? In order to answer those questions, we will be looking at Isaiah 65 uh, verses 21 through 25 and John 14, 2 and 3. So if you would like to get your Bibles ready, that might be helpful. What we're also going to do is take a look again at Psalm 23, only verses 5 and 6. Let's go ahead and read that. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. We read that uh, last week, I know. It's one that it would be, it'd be nice to, to memorize. It is, it's just beautiful. The last line says it all. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, that brings me to John 14, verses 2 and 3. If you will turn to that, Jesus is speaking, and he says, In my Father's house are many rooms, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, this, Jesus is telling us that he is going and he's preparing a place for us, a place for us. He has just said in my father's house, now his father's house, he means heaven. That means heaven. So in heaven, there are many rooms. Well, another way to translate that, some translations have said ma uh, mansions, uh, which isn't a very good translation at all. Uh, rooms is better. But there's also one that says dwelling places. There are many dwelling places. And these are places that where you will live, your own place. So in that line, in that one line where he says, in my father's house there are many dwelling places, and I go to prepare a place for you, you get a vision, or you should get a sense that you have your own special place that's just you, just for you, that's perfect just for you. Think about your room. If you could decorate it any way that you wanted and have what you wanted in it, that would just be all you. He's doing that for you. So you have this nice, cozy, small dwelling place is what I think about. I don't know about small, but a dwelling place just for you, but with it is within his father's house. So there are many of them. So you will be a part of something even bigger. So you'll have your own part and you're a part of something bigger. So that just, it makes me think of the coziness of my own room in my father's house where I'm still surrounded by my brothers and sisters in Christ where I have them there. Another scripture that is good for envisioning what it will be like is Isaiah. And Isaiah is a prophet who uh, was given these visions and uh, prophecies from God. And God is describing the new heavens and new earth. He says in 65, uh, verse 17, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Remember we talked about that last week, where our sins will not be um, held against us. So that's what that is talking about. But I will create a new heavens and new earth. That's heaven. 
And if you skip down to verse 21, it says, they shall build houses. These are his redeemed. These are his saved, those who, his servants that he's talking about. They shall build houses and inhabit them. That's us. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For, the, for like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Ah, remember the work of their hands. We talked about that last week. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain. This is the word of the Lord. So this gives a picture of peace and abundance a lot. He says, uh, before they call, I will answer. So he already knows what we will need, and he will answer it. As they are speaking, I will hear. He already knows what we're going to say before we say it. Of course, I think that's true now. But then, in heaven, it will be so. We will. He says they will build houses, but they won't build them for someone else to inhabit. So remember how last week we were talking about work and toil in work, how we, in heaven, we will still work. We just won't toil. We'll be doing things that we love. And in this case, what we build, we will, we will use. What, uh, what we plant, we will eat. It will be for our own enjoyment and for our own nourishment. We won't be toiling. And uh, if you notice, the wolf and the lamb shall graze together. Remember, a wolf is the predator of a lamb. It eats the lamb, but they will graze together. There will be peace. So this gives these two uh, scriptures really give an idea or give you a vision, I hope, of what it will be like. You'll have your own place among others in a larger place that is peaceful, that is comforting, where um, former enemies will dwell together in peace and we will have what we need. Now, there is scripture and then there is just some good writing. C.S. Lewis has a uh, ha, ha, wrote a series called the the Chronicles of Narnia, and we have them in the church in our library. And that door is open. Uh, if you go into the church, you can go in and get these. The first one is the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And uh, if you are if you've become a good reader. I suggest starting these books. And if you're not quite there yet, it's a good book for your mom or dad to read to you at night and go, you know, maybe a chapter at a time. Oh, it's a good one. So anyway, it starts with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and it ends with The Last Battle. And it has to do with heaven. And the and it, they have reached the new Narnia. There is the old Narnia, kind of like old earth, and new Narnia, like new earth, new heavens and earth. And that's what he's talking about in here. And this is from the last battle. It says, this is the unicorn who's talking, I have come home at last. This is my real country. I belong here. This is the land I have been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. The reason why we loved the old Narnia is that it sometimes looked a little like this. And that's from the last battle. And that's what he's talking about is heaven, is the reason why we love our home and our people and everything here on earth is because it looks just a little bit like what our home is in heaven. And that's the one that is real. So when we get there, it will be like when 
you come home from a long trip and you walk in the door oh and the smell is like oh, my home this is it that's what it'll be like your room that Jesus has prepared for you your place will be just for you so Let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that gives us a picture of what it will be like with you and your home, your, your heaven. And we are so grateful for it. It provides us such peace and comfort. And we thank you. We love you. We ask only today that... We are reminded through the Holy Spirit of your love and the home that is awaiting us and that when we look around our home, we can perhaps with our imagination think about what it could be with you, what would make it even better. So we love you and we thank you for your son and the, his work on the cross that, will, that allows us to be with you. It is in your son's holy name that we pray. Amen. Have a good day.